Acts chapter number 2. We'll begin reading in verse number 37. Acts chapter 2, verse 37. A little background. It's the day of Pentecost. The promise of the Comforter has arrived. The Holy Ghost fell on the disciples who'd been in an upper room praying for 10 days seeking the Lord. And he fell on them, and they got a good case of the can't help it. They couldn't hide out in that upper room anymore. And all of Jerusalem was filled with people from every nation. And God anointed Peter to stand up and preach. And he began to preach, and there was a great miracle that day. There are some that celebrate. They say that Peter spoke in tongues. But they have no idea what that means. Tongue is a language. The miracle wasn't that Peter spoke in tongues. The miracle was is that every man heard in his own language. Amen. And he preached and he especially upset the Jews because he told the truth. Can I say this? Every time you tell the truth, you upset people. And uh, we're going to pick up as he's concluding his message, particularly like verse 21 where he said, And shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I like that verse. And uh, he's preaching to them and he, he tells them they're the ones that crucified Jesus and Jesus has resurrected from the dead. Boy, they didn't like hearing any of that. But look what happens in verse 37. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, uh, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. Then the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Uh, And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Uh, And all that believed were together, and and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men, as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from house to house and did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Let's pray. Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you, Lord, we have this place where we can come and worship you in spirit and in truth. We're thankful to have the truth this morning. We're thankful for the precious promises of the Lord. We're thankful, Father, for the saints of God. Lord, we're thankful for Calvary and what you've done on Calvary. We're thankful, Lord, that you died for our sins, was buried and rose again according to the Scriptures. Uh, Father, we're thankful for the gospel. Father, we're thankful you made a way. You branched in a... A, a graph into the true vine and made a way for old Gentile dogs to be saved. And Father, we bless you and thank you we can come out today, lift up hands toward heaven and say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, Father, thank you now for good jail services. Thank you, Lord, for good Sunday school hour. Thank you, Father, for good singing to good folks that play. Thank you for them young men you sent to our church from St. Lucia. What a blessing. 
Lord, I pray for Ambassador Baptist down there in St. Lucia. You'd bless them today. Lord, looking forward. I'll be down there in a few weeks, and God, looking forward to that. But Lord, I'm interested right now in what you have to say out of this chapter. So I pray for the next few minutes you'd put a hedge about us. You'd bind the powers of hell. You'd speak to every heart. Uh, I pray for the saints of God. You would strengthen their faith. Uh, God, you'd do something special for them. Uh, You'd speak to them and give them an answer maybe they've been seeking for. If somebody is struggling along, I pray you'd strengthen them. Uh, And I pray every saint of God would be helped today. I pray if there be any in our midst... uh, who are strangers to the grace of God, who are lost in their sins. Uh, I pray today would be the day of their salvation. Uh, Father, I pray if there's anybody here saved, uh, but Father, they've just strayed a little bit. Lord, I pray they'd come back home uh, and God get back in the Father's will. Uh, Father, use this unworthy vessel now. Help and God will certainly be thankful and and will uh, bow these unworthy heads and praise you and thank you for all that you've done. Lord, we love you. Thank you for first loving us. Uh, Thank you in advance for what you're going to do, for it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, We ask it all. Amen and amen. I want you to notice out of this passage, first of all, the conviction of sin. In verse number 37, the Bible says, And when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Uh, Can I say uh, that's what preaching the Bible will do? The Apostle Paul said, preach the word. Uh, We live in a day and age uh, where fellows will open the Bible, but they won't preach much of it. Uh, uh, We live in a day and age uh, where preaching the word of God is labeled uh, as old-fashioned, as being a dinosaur. Uh, 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 Well, hey, count me in that crowd. Uh, 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 The Lord chose through the foolishness of preaching to save them that would believe. Uh, uh, Preaching will still get the job done. Uh, Preaching uh, uh, brings conviction. Listen, teaching imparts information. Uh, Preaching requires a decision. Uh, He just preached unto them under the power and anointing of God, uh, and they heard the word of God, uh, and it pricked them in their heart. Uh, uh, Listen, uh, we don't need to water it down. Uh, We don't need to substitute it. Uh, We just need to let them know what thus saith the Lord. Uh, I bless the Lord for Holy Ghost conviction. It was Holy Ghost conviction that brought me to the saving knowledge of Christ. I would never got saved unless I got lost. Can I say it's been a Holy Ghost conviction since I got saved that told me that I needed to get right, that I've stepped out of place, uh, that I've said something I shouldn't say, that I did something that I shouldn't do. Uh, thank the Lord for a Holy Ghost conviction. Uh, hey, what a blessing that He still speaks with that still small voice in our heart. Uh, So we see the conviction of sin. Now look at the corrective measure. They got convicted of their sin. What were they going to do about it? Look at verse 38. The Bible says this, Peter says, uh, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, uh, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and uh, for the promises unto you uh, and your children and to all that are far off, even as many uh, as the Lord our God shall call. Uh, and with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves uh, from this untoward generation. Uh, we see that Peter gives them what it takes to be saved. Uh, he tells them to repent uh, and to believe. Amen. Amen. Now listen. We could go to Ephesians chapter 4, and I could show you that there's one faith, one Lord, one baptism. Jesus started one church. We live in a day and age where there's over 300 different religions and denominations here in the United States. Can I say there's over 30 Baptist faiths? Hmm? Used to, if uh, you saw a sign, you knew what they believed. But that's not so anymore. But there's a whole denomination, by the way, it's, it's only about 150 years old. I'd rather stick with something that's over 2,000 years old. That's why Jude told us to earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Uh, listen, the faith hasn't always been called independent fundamental Baptist. The early church was called by the name of the town it was in. 
You find where Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus. Paul wrote to the church at Philippi. Paul wrote to the church at Galatia. We find in Revelation 2, it talks about those churches, uh, uh, the church at Smyrna and those churches. Uh, uh, early church was usually called by the location where it was. Uh, and then uh, as the gospel began to spread, uh, a lot of churches uh, uh, were called by the name of uh, of the man that came and preached to them. There were the Waldenses. Uh, there were the Paulicians because they preached the gospel. Uh, they preached Paul's writings. Uh, and uh, uh, through the generations, they were called a lot of things. Uh, uh, when the Catholic faith through the Dark Ages uh, uh, tried to snuff out the church uh, and uh, our forefathers did not uh, bow to their demands uh, 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 and we did not believe in infant baptism and we defended soul liberty, uh, uh, the Catholic faith uh, uh, tried to destroy the church and then we were called Anabaptists and on down through the line but one thing's always been true the faith that we've stood for Amen. the doctrine that we preach and I say that because uh, there's been some Johnny come lately's uh, they will take one verse out of context and build a whole doctrine on it and this is one of the verses they take out of context. They take out of context verse 38. In verse 38, Peter says, uh, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. we got a church right up the road. tells you you've got to be baptized to be saved because of that verse. And the verse in, in, in 2 Peter. Can I say that baptism has nothing to do with your salvation? If that was the case, the thief on the cross would have died and went to hell. Hmm? Baptism is what identifies you with the Lord's local church. Baptism is the first step in, in Christian obedience. Find that in Romans chapter 6. Uh, baptism uh, shows the gospel. You died out to sin and you was buried and then you was raised again in newness of life. That's what it shows. And so they take that out of context. And then they, they take out of context, uh, ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And there's a whole crowd out there that says there's a second blessing that you received after you get saved. Because the apostles uh, got the Holy Ghost after they prayed for it. But isn't it a blessing that Ephesians makes it very clear? The moment you get born again, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. What a blessing that He indwells us... Uh, when He saves us. Uh, uh, it's a supernatural thing, Brother Phil. Uh, the Holy Ghost does a supernatural operation. He cuts away that fleshly, stony part of our heart, uh, and He moves in and He seals our soul uh, until the day of redemption. What a blessing. Amen. You know why He had to do that, Brother Ron? Because you couldn't keep yourself saved. Right, right. So He had to seal you. Amen. And He did that when He saved you. Amen. 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 What a blessing. Well, that's not my notes, but I threw that out there anyway. Huh? Well, look what else we find in here. Notice the conversion in verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Can I say that's how you get saved? You receive the message of Jesus Christ. You believe in your heart that Jesus died for your sins, that he was buried, that he rose again. Uh, you receive him. You believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and get saved. What a blessing for the gospel. They received it gladly. It's a good news. That's what gospel means. You don't have to die and go to hell. Your sins can be paid for. That's good news. Uh, they gladly received that, and then they got baptized. What a blessing. Hmm? Uh, and the Bible says there were added unto them 3,000 souls that day. And then in, in, in verse 41, it closes out by saying, And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now another false doctrine, might as well help you right here. It's not in my notes. I may get to the message today, I may not. There are many that teach, and even Baptists that teach, the church started at Pentecost. Well, if that's the case, what do you do with the 120 in the upper room before Pentecost? And how can you add something to something that didn't exist? The Lord Jesus started the church Himself. 
And then he paid for it on Calvary. Amen. Then he commissioned it after he rose from the, de the dead. And then uh, as he ascended into heaven, he told them, get busy after the Holy Ghost comes upon you and be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, J uh, Samaria, and other most parts of the world. Yeah. Hey, can I say, uh, there was a church already here for Pentecost. Amen. Amen. So I hope that helps you. If it don't, see me after church. I'll get you a popsicle. Maybe that'll help you, huh? We see their conversion. We see their continuance in verse 42. The Bible says they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrines. It was that they were discipled. They were taught what the disciples were taught by Jesus. And they continued steadfastly. It was a whole new world to them. They couldn't get enough. Uh, and they constantly were being taught. Uh, I'm thankful I was taught. I'm thankful uh, I, I grew up in church. And uh, I endured it for a while. Then I got born again. And then I enjoyed it. But I'm glad I was taught some things. I'm glad I've sat under good men of God that taught me some things. I'm thankful that uh, the Bible's more than a book to me. The Bible's my resource and the final authority for my life. It's uh, my resource from heaven that uh, helps me guide my life and gives me answer and direction uh, for everything that I'll face. Uh, what a blessing they continued. Uh, and by the way, when folks get saved, they want to continue. Somebody gets, says they get saved and you can't find them for six months. I really don't know if they got saved. Everywhere in the Bible when Jesus changed somebody's life, they followed him in the way or wanted to follow him in the way. And we find everywhere in the, in the, in the Acts and everywhere through the epistle, when people get born again, they want to get involved in the things of God. Amen. Because you can't be a new creature in, in Christ Jesus and not want the things Jesus wants. And then notice the contentment. Look at verse 46. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking in bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. The Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Sounds like pretty good life to me. They were pretty content. They just loved going to church and then they'd go to one another's house and break bread and eat meat and fellowship, praise God. They were just happy, happy, happy. What a blessing. I'm interested in verse 44. The Bible says, And all that believed were together. I'm going to preach on this little thought this morning. Together we stand. Together we stand. Jesus said, The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and divide. And destroy. He wants to destroy by dividing. He wants to put a wedge down every aisle in every church. He wants to put a wedge in between every pew. Amen. He wants a, a, a lady being upset at another lady because she's got prettier shoes. He wants to get a man upset at a man because he drives a, an old Chevelle to church. And, uh, uh, you know, we got you know, folks, the devil just wants you to get, get ill with somebody. Right. Again, a thief coming out for to steal, kill, and destroy. What's he wanting to do? He's wanting to wreck our lives. Uh, Amen. You know how we combat the forces of evil? Standing together. Amen. Paul wrote in Ephesians, Having done all to stand, stand therefore. Together we stand. Individually, none of us are a match for the devil. It'll run over us like a steamroller over fresh asphalt. Right. But together, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God. Right. Throughout the epistles, Paul wrote, every church to be in one accord or to be of the same mind or to be like-minded. Right. Where there is no unity, there be no unction. We cannot have different agendas. We need to be on the Lord's agenda. Amen. Together we stand. Can I say togetherness, we stand on the Scriptures. Hmm? I am not ashamed, nor do I make any uh, 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 apology for the fact that the King James Bible is the Word of God for English-speaking people. Amen. 
It does not contain the Word of God. It is the Word of God. It is God-breathed. Uh, hey, can I say, uh, man did not write the Bible. God chose holy men of old, and God, through those men, pinned down uh, uh, the very words that we would need. Uh, can I say it's inspired? Uh, every uh, punctuation point, uh, every word uh, is exactly where God wants it and how God wants it. Uh, I don't need to correct the Bible. I don't need to change the Bible. Uh, I don't need a new Bible. Uh, I've got God's Word. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, the critics will say it's got 30 30,000 uh, errors and wherever you see an italics word uh, uh, that's an error that's inserted by man uh, no that was t uh, given in, in the context uh, uh, in order to make the syntax of the sentence uh, make sense in English uh, hey you got to understand uh, uh, when James King James uh, decided to have the Bible put down in English uh, uh, he put a crowd of people in one part of the country uh, another crowd in the other part of the country uh, when they came together, uh, it matched perfectly. Uh, only God could do that. Uh, God uh, allowed it to be handed down uh, uh, from Hebrew, from old Syriac, from German, from old Latin, all those ways, down to where it was translated into English. Uh, and my dear friends, been more people saved uh, uh, because of the King James Bible uh, than all the generations before them. Uh, Say, well, I can't understand it. Well, get better acquainted with the author. Yes. Mm. Well, we stand together on the King James Bible. Can you believe that there used to be a lie told on me that I didn't believe the Bible? I mean, we got it in the carpet. I got it on the back wall, and I carry it under my arm every time I come. Do you realize I've been preaching out of this Bible, this one right here, for 36 years? Had it recovered three times. Just had it recovered. Uh, Miss Tammy, Brother Thad took it over that place in Ohio. They put a buffalo hide on it. It's nice. I'm afraid to spit on it. We stand on the Bible. That's important because a lot of churches, people get their feelings involved. Well, what does the Bible say? That's the absolute fine authority, the Bible. And if it's outside the Bible, it really don't matter anyway. Uh, together we stand. We need to have togetherness on the Scriptures. We need to have togetherness socially. Look what it said in verse 42. And they continued daily, or that's verse 46, I'm sorry, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, there's the Bible, and fellowship in breaking of bread. Can I say it's important for us to do things as a local church outside of church? It's important to do things socially. It's important to get to know one another. It's important to center our social events on talking about the Lord and the goodness of the Lord and how the Lord's helped us. Uh, why? Because one day you're going to need one, somebody in here to pray for you. Maybe somebody needs to help bear your load. Maybe somebody just needs to be a friend when uh, you feel like you, nobody cares. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. It's important to do things socially. That'll help bond our church family. Amen. Listen, there are folks in here that I'm closer to than my actual physical family. Yeah. Can I say that there are folks in here that are my best friends in the world? Mm. There are folks in here that I can count on regardless of what I face. There are folks in here, I, I have no doubt, I can say, hey, I need you to pray for me. I know they're going to pray for me. Right. There are folks in here, if I say, hey, I need your help, they're going to show up and be, be helpful. There are folks in here that I can say, hey, I just need to vent, and they're going to listen to me rant and rave. Huh? There are folks in here that are just friends. If we don't do things socially, how will that happen? Huh? How are we going to get to know one another? You know what's sad is there are people who go to church and don't know the names of people they go to church with? Amen. That's sad. We can't even start church till Miss Judy hugs everybody. <laughs> Judy, Judy, Judy. Huh? I'm not talking about being nosy. I'm just talking about getting to know people. Amen. That's a blessing. And we've got a fellowship next Saturday. That's a blessing. Just come hang out. And when you hang out, sit with somebody you normally don't sit with. 
Go hang out with somebody else. It'll be a blessing. It'll help bond us together. Amen. Listen, we're fitly framed together, and the Holy Ghost is the mortar that keeps us together. But it sure is a blessing when we allow Him to bond us closer by getting to know folks. Hmm? We find togetherness on the Scriptures, togetherness socially, but we can also, very importantly, find togetherness in supplication. Look what it said in verse 42 again. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Nothing will bring a church together like prayer. Prayer is where the power of God comes from. Prayer is what impacts people's lives. Isn't it amazing when, when you get a child that's sick, you want everybody to pray? Why? Because you've seen it work. You have confidence in the people who are doing the praying. We need to be together in our prayer time. We always meet a half hour for service and pray. If you don't show up, you ought to start showing up. Uh, matter of fact, why don't we tonight, uh, fellas, why don't we meet down to Rock Alder at 530 and pray. It's been a while since we've been down to Rock Alder and pray. Let's go down there and pray. Amen. Just spend some time together in prayer. There's just something about, now listen, God honors private prayer and He teaches us to pray in our prayer closet. But there's something about corporate prayer. When we as a local body get together and start calling on God, say, does that really work? Well, go look at them 100, 120 in the upper room got to call on God. When they all got on the same page, Amen. hey, the Lord showed up big time. Hmm? Amen. Huh? We need to be together in prayer and supplication. Can I say this? We need to be together needs to be togetherness through selflessness. Look at verse 45. Now this is in the Bible. Everybody believe the Bible? Everybody love John 3.16? Well, this is just as scriptural as John 3.16. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. They were selfless. They said, somebody's got need, I'll go sell something. Now, let me correct this, Brother Rod, because people are about to faint. <laughs> uh, they couldn't go get a job. Most of them, the men did the trade that their father did. And can I say that women didn't work then, they stayed in the house. Matter of fact, women were considered property at the time. And so uh, uh, they just couldn't go out and work some overtime. They depend on somebody coming and needing their trade. But when God got to moving and God got the blessing and they got to hanging out with the apostles and the apostles started telling about all that Jesus had done and all that Jesus had taught them, uh, they just didn't want to leave. And they went and sold what they could and they all come and put it in the pot and the kitty and if anybody had need, just take care of it. Now I could see if I mandated, Brother Josh, I want everybody to go sell everything they got and come and bring it in the kitty. We would, we would cut the membership down real low. <laughs> what that verse is teaching us is not to do that, but to be selfless. And that if we have a brother or sister in the need and we can meet the need, let's meet the need. Amen. Let's come together and help them. Amen. That's what it's teaching. It's teaching selflessness. I'll never forget Brother Doug testifying a couple of years, and I, it rings in my ear a lot, Brother Doug, when you said you wish people could learn the gift of giving. God loveth a cheerful giver. Amen. And I said this the other day, you can't outgive God. Uh, nothing pleases God any more than somebody getting saved. But when His children are selfless, and they give to help another. Mm -hmm. yeah. Togetherness on, through selflessness. I'm glad we got a giving church. Amen. You know, i got to go back a lot of years where I had any friction at all. I don't know how many times I've stood before you and said, we need to take care of this. We need to give towards this. We need to give toward that. We need to send money here. And, and, 
invariably everybody says, all right, let's do it. That's why God's blessed our church so much. Amen. Uh, God don't like stinginess. He blesses giving. Yeah. Well, we also need to be together through serving the Lord. Look in verse 46. I'm about done. I'm over that giving part. You can breathe again. <laughs> and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and the breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God. They were together and worshiping the Lord. They worshiped at the temple. They'd go to the house and praise the Lord. Everywhere they were, they were serving the Lord. They were doing something for the honor of the Lord. Can I say, the happiest we'll ever be is when we're serving the Lord. Amen. Amen. We just need to be together and serving. Amen. I thank the Lord for the ministries He's allowed us to start. Everything from you know, having toddler Sunday school, having stuff for the youth, having uh, the Bible Institute, having the jail ministry, and all the ministries God has blessed us. You know what? We ought to never rest on our laurels. We ought to always look for ways to serve, people to help, people to reach with the gospel. And then notice the subsequence or the reaping of togetherness. Look at verse 47. And having favor with all the people... And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. That tells me two things. Number one, they weren't smart alecks. They found favor with all the people. It means they had a good spirit about them. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Can I say when we do right, the Lord will certainly do right. He always does right. But we'll see the impact of that just because God's God. Now, can I let you in on a little something? I'm going to, so you might as well. I woke up this morning knowing we was going to have about 30 people out. I knew that, getting out of bed. Now, listen, as a pastor, you got to know my heart. I preach to two people. I preach that back wall. I do all the time. While I'm here at the church. I, I'm preaching all over the hallways and everything. But I preach to two people. Because that's what God called me to do, preach. Amen. But as a pastor, you sure like seeing the house full. Sure. You don't like seeing empty pews. And I knew there'd be 30-something out today, and I asked the Lord to give them traveling mercy. I prayed for them, and, and I said, Lord, just help the service today. And I'm standing back there for Sunday school and all of a sudden I start seeing visitors come in. Now I don't know where they came from. I'm not a nosy pastor. I didn't come and ask you all about your lives and all that kind of I know pastors do that and it drives me crazy. If they would offer up then I'll sit there and have a conversation all day. But I thought, isn't that like the Lord? I mean, we're so faithful to go out and invite folks to church. And I don't know how many went out last Monday and we invited folks to church, passed out a bunch of tracks and, and done all that. And we did our part. And I knew we was going to be lacking today. And just like the Lord, he just sent visitors. We've got visitors sitting all around the sanctuary. Amen. Just so his house wasn't empty. Yeah. And I, th I, thought, I thought before I was preaching, I thought, well, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. He sure is good, isn't he? Yes, sir. We always reap a lot better than we sowed. I promise you. Yes, sir. Let me give you this. I'll be done. How do we achieve togetherness? You think it'd be simple. I mean, how can we all be on the same page? Well, first of all, we've got to have the same God. Yeah. Unlike George W. Bush, who said... The Muslims, the Christians, everybody, we all have the same God. Au contraire. Amen. Right. Amen. We believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, we believe in a triune holy God Amen. who's in control. Right. He is our God. Yes. Right. We don't pray to statues. We don't bow before a man. We pray to the Lord Jesus Christ who is our one mediator between God and man. Amen. Amen. Uh, got to have the same God. got to be saved. Mm -hmm. If you're not saved, we'll never get together. How can two walk together except they be agreed? Right. Hmm? Got to have the same God. Huh? 
I get invited to all kinds of community things with all kinds of these uh, lollipop churches around here. But I don't go. Because if I go, I'm sanctioning what they believe. Hmm. Now, if they asked me to come and give them the gospel so they know the truth, I'd go. But that's not what they want. They want to put on a facade. They need to put on Christ. So we've got to have the same God. Can I say this? We've got to have the same guidelines. We're going to be together. We've got to all have the same guidelines. Isn't it, would, isn't it wonderful with God? He don't have 40 sets of rules. He don't have a set of rules for Hillary. He don't have a set of rules for Joe. He don't have a set of rules for all, all them wicked FBI guys. And, and then people on the right, here's your rules. Hmm? That's what our world's turned into. Amen. But not with God. Say, if we're going to be together, we've got to have the same guidelines. We've got the same rule right here. Right. It fits us all. Right. And God overall is rich to all that call upon Him, and God knows exactly how to deal with us. Well, ain't it wonderful? Get, we all follow the same rules. We'll be in good shape. You know, I've been in church where the preacher gives the rules, and he'll give you a list of rules. Have nothing to do with the Bible, but he'll give you a list of rules. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in what God says. Amen got to have same rules, got to have same requirements. If it's faithful for me, you know, required of me and I got to be faithful, then it's got to be required of you. Amen. All got to have same requirements. Huh? What's good for the goose is good for the gander. And we got to have the same resolve. Why do we come? We come to worship, but we come to get filled up so we can go out there and empty ourselves and tell sinners that Jesus loves them right. and he wants to save them. We don't go out and be nasty to sinners. We go out and we show them compassion. Amen. We give them the truth. Let them know. Hey, come see a man. Right. Yeah. Told me all things ever I done. Is this not the Christ? We need to share with them Jesus. We've got to have the same resolve. Why do we do what we do? We do what we do to worship God and to fulfill His will in our lives, and that's to tell sinners that they can be saved. And then we've got to have the same goal, same agenda. And that very agenda is this, Christ. Yes. Not I, but Christ that liveth in me. Right. He's our goal. I want more of him, less of me. Hey. And I want to do what he has for us to do. Uh, I want everything he has for us. Now, our personal agendas cannot supersede our corporate agenda. We all have personal agendas. Anybody been busy this week? Amen. Put them up. Yeah. Been a busy, crazy week. Mm -hmm. It's not going to slow down. Brother Adrian had to throw that at me this morning. Huh? Be in Jacksonville next week. Then we're going to be in Revival. Then we're going to be in St. Lucia. And I mean, it's picking up. Huh? You say, what's that mean? It means a lot of time traveling. We'll be in some great services. But the older we get, it's harder on us. But I say this. We can't have personal agendas affect what God wants to do. Mm -hmm. We all got to be together on the fact of what God wants to do. Now, I said I always say this. We're getting ready to go and revive. We all need to be on the same page. Amen. I really believe if we get together, God's going to give us the answers hey. yes, sir. that we need about the building can't get over that guy right next door to us needs to sell to us I've been asking the Lord for it especially when I saw him out there mowing during Sunday school I'm thinking he don't need to be here he needs to be out in a big field somewhere Lord give us that huh? but the Lord knows the answers Amen. the Lord knows our needs we're out of Sunday school room for our kids we need more Sunday school space we don't have fellowship hall big enough anymore. We need that. Lord knows all that. Maybe the Lord's withheld the answer because we haven't been together. We may come, but we may not be in. I was reading this the other day, and one thing kept just overwhelming my thought. They were all in. You say, well, they didn't have jobs, and they didn't have computers, and they didn't have phones, and they didn't, exactly. They had Christ. Yeah. 
Maybe we need to ask God, God, what do I need to extract from me that I can be all in with you, with your church? God, help us. Together we stand. Divided we fall. Now listen, I'm the pastor. I do not know of one divisive thing going on in our church. I don't. I, I, I got my thumb on the pulse of it. I don't know of any insurrection. I don't know of anybody that's not, not willing to do whatever God wants done. But maybe we need to let God know that we're all in. Amen. Maybe he's just waiting for us to take the next step. Instead of just being willing, he needs to see that you will. Amen. There's a difference. Father, I'm willing, whatever you want. Father, thy will be done. It's a difference. Amen. It's good. Amen. Putting your foot forward or resting on your laurels. The indictment of the Laodicean church is they were content where they were. God help us not to be content with anything but Jesus. Right. Amen. Amen. Today, will you commit to His will? Be more than willing. Take that next step. Don't tell them what God do for us. God may save many folks from all them tracks we've handed out this year. Be wonderful to see a harvest of souls start walking an aisle trusting Christ. God may provide all the answers we need. He's just waiting to see if we're willing. Because I promise you he's willing. And he's well able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. I still want from here to the stop sign. Might as well take the place across the street. They contacted me, Brother Ed. They were in the drop to price. They found out his residential, you know, his residential wasn't business. I don't know if they're willing to drop it enough, but time goes on, they may give it to us. You say, you really believe that? I believe God can do all things. Stranger things have happened. I just want to see what he'll do. How about you? Amen, you willing to get together on this thing, see what God does in revival? Sure. No telling. No telling. Some are on the fringe because they're letting life pull at them. We need to go all in so the pull of God gets them where they need to be. How about it today? You willing to let God use you for his glory? You may be here today and you might not be saved. And what I said didn't, didn't make any sense to you. But there's something inside tugging at you. Friend, in a moment we're going to have an invitation. We invite you to come. Believe on the Lord. Say, I don't know how to be saved. You come, we'll take a Bible. Show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. And you can rejoice and that your name's written down in heaven. You may be here today and may be saved, but just been going through the motions. Well, why don't you just get all in? Just jump in head first. See what God has for you. Let's all stand, Brother Clint. Come get a song. There's a little simple thought this morning, but together we stand. I'm glad you're here. It'd be a lot better if you was all in. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the Bible.
Lord, I'm reminded where much is given, much is required, and you have blessed us with the truth. And you require a lot from us. God, help us to certainly make not your investment in vain. But Lord, help us to take that you put in us and impact somebody's life. Lord, thank you for these that have already come. I don't know what they're talking to you about, but Lord, help them and bless them. Help our church. God, do great things in revival. Lord, we certainly do pray if there's somebody here today lost, that today would be the day of their salvation. Bless this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.